So today we are talking about fueling fitness, performance, and this is not going to matter who you are in terms of your day-to-day. -day. You could be a high-level elite type athlete or at least a high-level elite performer. So does the plan change depending on who you are? Yeah, of course. The plan is going to change depending on your activity levels, but the approach is going to be the same. It's just how we create your specific plan within that approach is the thing that's going to change. And obviously that's what I I do that's exactly why I'm here to help I'm here to lay down the parameters of the performance that you're after and then I'm also here to help put together that individualized customized personalized plan that's going to get you to where you need to go or where you want to go all right so we've got our high level athletes we've got our average Joe's trying not to be average and then we've got people that I would say maybe you do put yourself a little bit more into that average Joe category where you're like all right yeah I'm struggling like I, I struggle just to take care of my wellness I struggle with my energy levels. I struggle just to get around day to day, do the things I need to do for work, do the things I need to do for my kids. And I just feel like I'm always just spinning my wheels and I'm just trudging through the mud. And like all of these three things can be fixed with a similar approach. Obviously the game plan just changes depending on the person. And that's where obviously the individual approach and, and the customized approach that has to be taken for nutrition, that's where that comes into play. So basically this was kind of something that I had really started to consider last week because many of some of you don't. Me and Krista, my wife, we were away hiking last week. We did some hikes in Lake Tahoe. We did some hikes in Yosemite National Park, which was awesome. And then we did some hikes in Sequoia National Park. And then also we did some walking around down in, in the cliffs around LA and Malibu area and stuff. We got around and I estimate we probably covered about 60 miles over the course of the week. It's a lot, right? It's not 60 miles of just walking on the sidewalk right it's 60 miles of climbing up in steep elevations uh, a lot of big rocks all that stuff getting up into high elevations uh, steep pitch whatever you want to call it so it, it's taxing on the body even though it's a little bit of a slower state stressor i'm not running i'm not sprinting i'm not doing anything super crazy but also we're throwing in workouts on top of that so we were trying to stay in the gym and stuff in the mornings before we go do all these things so just in general, the load on our bodies over the course of the week was high. It was very high. I had to put the, the sports dietitian's cap on a little bit. And I really ha had to consider, hey, what is our nutrition approach going to be? If we want to hike 10 miles today, 10 miles tomorrow, 16 miles the next day, like we're logging at minimum every day, five, six hours of walking up to 11 was the longest we went and trying to get workouts in the mornings before these things. So the nutrition approach had to be there. We weren't going to make it through this week feeling good, right? Like the, the whole idea is to enjoy ourselves too. Like we don't want to just feel like we're torturing ourselves and we're just slugging our way through the week and we don't want to do it. And we wanted to enjoy it. We wanted to keep our energy levels high and we wanted to keep our level of enjoyment high. So that's where I got thinking about like, all right, obviously I had to plan the nutrition approach out for the week. There was a lot to consider there. But it came down to three things that we did. And then when I got to thinking about it, flight home or whatever, I was like re reflecting on the week and I'm like, man, you know what? It really, I'm telling you, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're the average Joe literally trying to scrape your ass up off the couch or if you're a high level athlete and you're trying to set PRs in the gym or anybody in between, the approach is not going to change. Again, the plan will change. There will be a difference in the way you have to carry out the approach, but the approach should be very similar, all right? And I'm going to start with this. So a lot of people, and this sucks because this is all over the internet and it's false. It's just bad advice. And I see, I've even talked to like professional baseball players who are doing, uh, car trying carnivore diets. And you even you look back at CrossFit back in the day where a lot of those guys were like strict paleo and they would only eat one sweet potato a day. And basically just like their carbohydrate intake was very low. And you still see people pushing the idea that you don't need carbohydrates for energy and you can just be on a keto diet and you can be running off ketones for your energy and you're going to feel amazing and you're going to perform just as well and unfortunately it's just not the case the evidence doesn't back it and honestly just somebody who likes to live a life of high performance I, I can feel the difference and I did feel the difference this past week so the thing here is do not let people get in your head about carbohydrates and the energy source or the energy availability they provide to your body, to your cells, so that they can produce energy, so that you can feel awesome every day and friggin' run on at 100 instead of running at 40, instead of running at 50, instead of running at 30, 
right? We don't want to be there. We want to be feeling like we're running on high. We want to be running on a full tank, essentially. So that leads me to number one. Carbs are a must. I'm talking about performance today. Whether that is the ability to perform your daily tasks of living, running errands, going to work, moving around, walking, taking your dogs for walks, taking your kids to the park, maybe getting a, a jog in or a workout in on top of it, all the way up to I'm going to run a marathon, I'm going to try to lift as heavy as I can lift, I'm going to be a bodybuilder, whatever the hell you want to do. All right, carbs are a must. I, I will tell you, this is never more evident than on that 12-hour hike, it was an 11-hour hike that we did last week. Carbs were the thing, and it's crazy because you can actually feel them hit your system. When we would stop and we would have our snacks and they were carbohydrate dominant, I would say, or they were more carb focused over anything else. And that was a strategic play because I know that carbs are the thing my body's going to be able to digest them really quickly and utilize them for fuel really fast. So we were relying on things like we went through a, a bottle of Powerade and we did this trail mix, which there wasn't even like really much for fats in it. It had some strips of coconut but it was really just like Chex Mix, chocolate, dried fruit, and a little bit of coconut. So it was pretty heavy, just simple carbohydrate. And literally a couple bites of that, a couple handfuls, or we had you know, a couple spoonfuls of that, and you can literally feel like the power surge. It's actually pretty wild, especially when you're tired. Like when you're actively using your body and you're running low on energy stores and then you replenish them, you can literally feel like the energy like surging back into your body. It's really quite wild. I cannot stress enough. And I know in today's world, everything is like, oh, carbs are killing you. Don't eat carbs, your blood sugar, this, that, the next thing. They're bad for you. Sugar, if you eat sugar, you will be inflamed. You will have diabetes. You will die an early death. You will get Alzheimer's, whatever it might be, okay? Sugar is a great fuel source when you're using it, okay? Do I recommend you guys sitting down to a bag of that trail mix like I just talked about, which was cereal, simple carb, and chocolate, pure sugar, when you're at work? Would I be sitting down and eating this now while I'm sitting here at my table, at my desk, and working for 10 hours today? No, I would not. I would not be recommending that right now, right? Sugar, pure sugar is not going to be the play when I don't need it, but... When I need it, it is 100% the play. So if we're talking about performance, all right, sugar is a great go-to or simple carbohydrates are a great go-to. A lot of times you're going to hear the exact opposite. Oh, don't do this. Don't do that. Don't drink a Gatorade. It's terrible for you. Gatorade was developed by sports scientists to be pretty beneficial to the athlete that's in the middle of training. Even if you're not high level, like you wouldn't consider yourself like this high level athlete. You might be sitting here saying, Adam, I don't ever plan to go on an 11 hour hike and I might be lucky if I move a couple hours a day at the most, but don't be fooled by that. You still need carbs. So if you're somebody who's very active, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're getting in carbs frequently throughout the day so that you can fuel that activity. Also the thing between simple carbs versus complex carbs, or usually you guys might know them as good versus bad carbs. So the complex carbs, the ones with the fiber, those are gonna get tabbed your good carbs. The simple carbs, the ones that are more starchy and sugary, those are gonna get tabbed as your bad carbs. Neither one's really good or bad, it just depends on the timing of them. So honestly, simple carbs are going to be best for people during times of high intensity, high activity levels. When me and Krista were out on the hike last week, and we were going to be continuously moving for 11 hours, we needed as much fuel as easy as we could get it, or as much energy as fast as we could get it. So we relied more on simple carbohydrate. That, that's just plain and simple. If I'm going to the gym and I'm 15 minutes away from my workout and I wanna get in a little bit of an energy bump, I'm probably not gonna have a quinoa or something like that, or beans that are highly fibrous and they don't digest super well, or they take longer to digest. I wanna get something in me that's gonna digest really quickly. So maybe that is where I turn to a little bit of orange juice, maybe a half of a Gatorade, maybe I have some fruit, maybe I have some white rice or a white potato, things that are gonna just have less fiber and enter the system a lot quicker. So it's not necessarily what's good or bad, it's in the moment, which makes the most sense in the moment, what's best for that time. And your complex carbohydrates are best for the majority of the time when you're more at rest and you don't need that fast fuel. So for me, if I was gonna have a snack this afternoon that contains some carbohydrate, 
I'm probably going to want to do a, a complex card with some fiber. I'm not going to want to have a bag of candy and then just sit back down at my desk or a bowl of cereal or a white potato or something like that. I'm going to want to make sure I get some complex carbs. So maybe that's where the quinoa comes in. That's where the lentils or the brown rice comes in. And then my body can utilize that fuel as it needs it. I'll tell you exactly what I think is bad and what you should never eat. Do not drink soda. Don't drink the horseshit Starbucks like milkshake type drinks. Don't eat fried foods. Those are like the three things where I draw the line. There's just no need for that stuff nutritionally. It's not good health wise. Besides that, it does come down to leveraging stuff as we need it, okay? So I'm cool with you guys doing some cereal. I'm cool with you doing a little bit of chocolate. I'm cool with you doing a little bit of candy or something like that if you're about to do something super intense. I'm not cool with you doing that if you're about to go sit down and work for 12 hours. Your body's not going to need that fuel source. Your body's gonna be more likely to use a complex carbohydrate and a, and a more dominant fat source. It's all about learning how to leverage this stuff to improve your performance no matter what you're doing. If you want to feel a little bit better, improve your energy levels throughout the day, incorporate some carbohydrate. That's going to be highly dependent on your activity levels, that's exactly what I'm here for to help. If you're sitting here being like, man, I got no, like how much carbs should I eat? So if you feel really confused on that, don't be afraid to reach out. Number two, food is fuel. Do not forget this. Do not neglect this fact. There's one way to provide energy to your body, usable energy that your body can convert and utilize for energy output. If we want energy, we have to consume energy in the form of calories so that we can expend it. This is science. So don't think that your body is different. Oh no, I, I can go 12 hours without eating and I actually have way more energy. I actually perform better when I don't eat. No, you don't. It's been studied mil a million times. You don't do better. You might think it, you might think you're doing better. You're not, that's a proven fact. So adequate calorie intake is literally vital no matter who you are. And again, we're talking performance. We're talking improvements in energy level. We're talking improvements in recovery. We're talking improvements in sleep, brain function, anything performance related and wanting to take your life up a notch. But either way, it doesn't change the fact that you still have to have a caloric intake similar to your caloric output. So on a day like today, I need less food than I needed last week when I was hiking for 11 straight hours. But the, the parameter doesn't change. If I wanna keep my energy high and I wanna sustain it long term, I need to consume the amount of calories close to that I'm burning. This is literally what ran me out of hockey is I got so crazy about my diet I was really under consuming calories. My output was huge. This is not an exaggeration. I was in the gym two to three hours a day easily, usually more like three. And I was on the ice a couple hours a day and I was trying to stay active outside of the gym. My energy output was massive. I was doing a paleo diet that I didn't want to eat the fats. I was probably consuming like 2000 calories a day when I was probably burning like six. And then you know what happened? I crashed and burned hard. I was racking up injuries, I was getting weaker, I was getting slower, I had no energy ever for anything. Everything was a chore. I was just battling with like workouts and with my training on ice and everything like that. And it's simply because I didn't understand that I needed to have a more adequate calorie intake. And if I would have had a more adequate calorie intake, I would have felt a lot better, I would have performed a lot better, I would have become a better athlete. I would have lasted longer in hockey because I wouldn't have got burnt out. I wouldn't have got beaten up and broken down and some stupid little injuries stacking up and stuff like that because I didn't put the fuel into my body that it required. And I thought I knew better and I clearly didn't. And now I do. <laughs> now I know better. I had to go back to school and basically dedicate my life to this shit, but I'm glad I did it. But I know enough now to understand that Listen, food is energy. And without adequate calorie intake, without adequate energy intake, you will not have adequate energy production. You have to figure out what your adequate calorie intake that is going to maximize your energy levels. And you have to aim for that amount of calories. And if you can do that, life is going to get a lot better for you. It's going to get a lot easier for you. Your energy levels are going to be great every day. Your recovery will be high. Your sleep will be better. Your brain function will be better. Your mood will be better. Okay, all of these things. And then that leads me into the third one here is uh, your meal and snack frequency. I wouldn't go more than five hours without consuming food. You'll start to build up like that hunger where you get more likely where you might go off the rails and have a snack attack, basically. 
right? So if we're going to max out on our performance, we want to make sure we have a nice steady intake of energy throughout the day. I would say anywhere from every two to four hours, depending on your activity level. So if you plan for a two hour workout today, it might be smart to have a, a couple drinks of Gatorade or whatever at the one hour mark so that your body has time to digest and absorb that energy. So those are the three things guys where I think, like I said, doesn't matter if you're trying to get yourself up off the couch, just be more active, be more available, just improve your day-to-day -day quality of life performance all the way up to that high level athlete. These are the three things, right? So carbs are going to be a must. It's number one. Number two, food is fuel. Do not neglect this. Do not think your body is different. You need fuel. You need to intake energy so that you can expel energy. Yeah, energy in, energy out. All right, let's just call it that. My Maybe I need a snack. My brain's starting to fail me here. I've been talking for too long. That's number two. Number three, meal or snack frequency okay make sure you're consuming food at the right uh intervals based upon your energy expenditure those are the three things that i think everybody needs to focus on and like i said the parameters don't change only the plan does and then that's how we build a customized plan for your individual performance kind of based off of those things that's exactly what i'm here for i'm here to help if this is not your area of expertise then Rather than struggling with it forever and, and maybe never figuring it out, I think it's probably smart just to get the help, get it done, get yourself on a path that you can follow for the rest of your life and feel amazing.